Okay, um, we're gonna talk about stuff. This is long overdue, of course. Um, not everything, because, you know, I do have to do some catching up with, uh, you know, certain games and whatnot. Uh, for one thing, we're gonna finish off, uh, 2017, uh, related stuff. Um, you know, let me actually grab some of this stuff and not just keep it so freaking high up, you know, from me. Let's see, where to begin? Um... I don't know, how about this? This is NHL 15 on the PS4. Um, not exactly a hockey fan, but you know, there were a couple reasons to get this, you know. Uh, mainly because it seems like a lot of, uh, all my friends seem to have this, you know. Uh, mainly because of a bundle or something, you know, a bundle that I'm not really aware of, but I guess for that fact alone I had to jump in on the, you know, the bandwagon and, uh, get a copy of NHL 15 on the PS4. I've played, like, two games of this, and I just remember it being kind of... It's kind of there, and you know, thanks to a uh, five dollar off eBay coupon, uh, I was able to get this game for almost free. Almost free. It was like still like fifty cents, but you know what? Fuck it. That's uh, pretty damn good. And in that same vein, I got uh, NHL 07 on the Xbox 360. Um, <clears throat> again, in case with this, where it's like the first NHL on the system, so why not? You know. Uh, but this one I was able to get totally for free because it was like four dollars and fifty cents. So yeah, I got it for free. Um, I like this one a lot more. I actually played like three games of this. I actually uh, th think it's pretty cool. Um, might revisit it and see exactly why I liked it as much as I did, even if I'm not exactly a hockey fan. But you know, it's a respectable effort and you know enjoyable game. Okay. Uh kind of weird jumping from uh, Xbox 360 to original Xbox, but fuck it, here's an original Xbox game I got uh, last year, late last year, Lynx 2004, part of, you know, the many uh, Lynx golf games, uh, most of which were on PC, but I do have another one here, um, let me get it out here, uh, Lynx the Challenge of Golf on the Sega CD, you know, some of the only uh, Lynx games to appear on a console. Uh, but yeah, this is, of course, uh, a simulation-based golf game. When I first played I was kind of concerned, like, is this going to be too simulation? Like, I'm not going to be able to get into this. But I was able to get into it almost the same way as any other uh, good, enjoyable golf game. And yeah, this is a enjoyable golf game. I quite liked it. I actually did really well um, in it, better than almost any other golf game I can think of playing through around 18 holes, but it was only on one course. You know, you have multiple courses, you can unlock more. Uh, it's a neat game. It's cheap, like a lot of stuff on the original Xbox, and it's compatible with the 360. So, if you uh, have an original Xbox or any way of playing OG Xbox games, get this. Uh, let's see here. Um, okay, this is actually, uh, again, jumping... Back to 360 here, this was a recent purchase and a label upgrade. I got another copy of Sonic Freeriders for the Xbox 360. I actually have my copy right here, and uh, I'm not sure if you can tell, but this one is actually water damaged. The uh, fucking artwork is, I'm not sure if you can tell there, but yeah, it is fucking horrible, and I tolerated it for so long, but uh, now this thing is as good as fucking garbage, because again, now I have one that isn't water damaged. Um, I've been thinking about revisiting this game. I might actually sit down and at least beat one of the, you know, you know, campaigns in this, because, uh, why the hell not, you know? It's an interesting sort of experience, you know, uh, maybe this game, uh, is gonna be better next time than I revisit it? I don't know. The, the little I did play of it, I didn't absolutely hate it, but, you know, yeah, there's no kidding that uh, this game is definitely a little bit infamous, though, you know, of course, the, uh, the elephant in the room here is, um, why is Vector on Team Rose? Why couldn't it have been Blaze the Cat, like I'm sure it was in certain comics? I mean, I can understand why not Big, you know, because having Big in Sonic Riders would be fucking insane, even though Big was part of Team Rose and Sonic Heroes. You get what I mean. I don't have that much to say about this. Uh, hopefully I said some things different than when I first talked about this game, like, four years ago on this show. Okay, uh, now, back, uh, again, this was, um, 
So the next few games, or the next few items and whatnot here I got were for free. Uh, you know, from the same person I got a whole bunch of games for free uh, last last May, you know. Uh, but not as much stuff, but still some neat little things that I got for free that I'm glad to have uh, put in the collection. This is uh, NBA Live 08 on the Xbox 360. Um, yeah, it's uh, basketball. Um, I played like a game of it. It was actually pretty good. Uh, I don't really have much else to say other than I guess the load times in this were actually pretty long. Um, yeah. I also got um, Trauma Center Under the Knife for the DS. Uh, this is, uh, of course, you know, it's fucking Trauma Center. Last, um, last May I got Trauma Center Second Opinion on the Wii for, from them. Uh, now I have fucking Under the Knife on the DS. Uh, surgery hospital game I can't exactly get into, but you know, it's touchscreen versus motion controls. I believe this is also my 40th DS game, so that's, uh... That's something. Uh, I got some other stuff. Like I got a box for a Wii, which I actually traded in and was able to uh, get. Not much, but you know, I traded that in to help pay for uh, Mike Piazza's Strike Zone on the N64, which I showed off. Um, I want to say last episode or two episodes ago. I don't know, but I did also get this box, GameCube box, so the black GameCube. Um, this this was probably this must have been like the first iteration of the box, uh, GameCube box, because on the back here it shows advertising. It's advertising like um, <clears throat> Donkey Kong Racing, which obviously never came out, and it's also advertising a cameo, uh, Elements of Power, which obviously was never ended up on the GameCube. You know, as you can see, right there. I'm not sure how well you can see it, but yeah, and of course it's advertising like Luigi's Mansion and Wave Race Blue Storm, so. Yeah, this has got to be the first iteration of the GameCube box, so that's pretty cool. It's also in French, too, because, you know, it's... It, 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 fucking welcome to Canada. Got this. This is a box for a Pokemon, Pikachu, whatever, fucking special edition of the Game Boy Color with Pikachu, Togepi, and Jigglypuff on the screen and a little Pokeball and whatnot. Um, unfortunately, there's no Game Boy Color here or game, so it's just a box... Uh, box is in really good shape, you know, because it was probably just sitting in a closet for like, you know, Lord knows how long. So, yeah. And I got two boxes for Game Boy Advance games, uh, both of which I have. Uh, Super Monkey Ball Jr. and Game Watch Gallery 4. I also did get another copy of a Super Monkey Ball Jr. along with this box, so that's pretty cool. It's nice to have uh, some, you know, boxes for free. Uh, you know, Game Boy Advance boxes are probably a little more uh, easier to find because I think by then people were making a bit more of a valiant effort to actually try and preserve these fucking things, so that's pretty cool. See how long this is? Eight minutes. I think we're making decent time. Uh, what else to talk about? Um, yeah, we're just going all over the place. Like, I'm trying to get all the 2017 stuff out of the way. Like, here's a 2017, uh, per or not 2017, 2018 purchase. This is Power Spike Pro Beach Volleyball on the Game Boy Color, which, as you can imagine, this is the only volleyball game on the Game Boy Color. And I guess it got made because, you know, hey, there was a PS1 game of this, which I have, so I guess they had to make a Game Boy Color tie-in. Kind of, I kind of would have liked if they also made an N64 version of the game, but whatever. It's, it's volleyball. I'm sure I've said that so many fucking times with so many sports games, like, oh, it's soccer, it's football. It's like, no fucking shit, you know? Fucking bitch, oh, whatever. Anyways, um, yeah, uh, it's a pretty good game. I remember thinking, looking at this up a while ago and thinking that this was somehow similar, played similar to, like, Super Spike V-Ball on the NES. I wouldn't say it does, but, you know, it's competent and it's enjoyable, and if anything, you should get it just to... You know, ha say you have a good third-party Game Boy Color game in your collection. Okay, I believe that's it for 2018 purchases. Uh, but while we're on the subject of the Game Boy Color, here's uh, Ken Griffey Jr.'s Slugfest, also on Game Boy Color. I mainly got this because I was watching the uh, 
some of the videos by Virtual Gaming Library, who, you know, recently did a project showing off every single Game Boy Color game, and part of the case section is, well, of course, this. I remember seeing this, and I thought it looked pretty competent, and, you know, the music's uh, pretty good. The uh, in-game track is pretty good, you know, when you're actually playing a game of baseball. It's a little short, but, you know, it's quite catchy. I played one game of this, you know, I, I played it and thought, well, maybe fielding might be a little bit of an issue, but it's competent, you know, I liked it. Um, I guess if you're a fan, of course, of uh, the N64 game, Ken Griffey Jr. Slugfest, go ahead and pick this up, you know. Might be the best baseball game on the Game Boy Color, I don't know. Um, here's one I think I have a little more to say about. Donkey Kong, you know, of course, as you may know, this is Donkey Kong 94. This is a game, of course, I knew about for long time ago, because I was, you know, I don't know, just heard about it. Uh, anyways, um, it, it was kind of interesting, because obviously this isn't just a straight Game Boy port of the arcade game, you know, it, it was kind of interesting when I found out that there wasn't, like, you know, say a Game Boy port of Donkey Kong Jr. or, or a Game Boy port of Mario Bros., but then they make this, and then I find out it's not just a port, it's actually a complete, you know, different game but it of course starts off as the Donkey Kong you know arcade game and then transitions into you know the puzzle solving platformer that it is that of course is essentially the precursor to Mario vs Donkey Kong and this game is just as great as everyone says it is it's really cool too because it's so new to me because I've seen so little of this game I don't think I've seen anything beyond like the second world so really it's a really great pleasant surprise and just a joy to play overall as I you know continue on more and more. It's an absolutely great game, you know. Uh, check it out. You know, puzzles, solving's fun. It never seems too tedious, you know. Uh, yeah. Of course, uh, DK Jr. appears later on in the fourth world. Music's good. Just good stuff. Great stuff, actually. Okay, so I only got one in 64 game in March. Um, so I'll show it to you right here. This is National Basketball Association Showtime, National Basketball Association on National Broadcasting Corporation. Yes, obviously, it's NBA Showtime, NBA on NBC. And as you know, this is, of course, a very arcade-like basketball game, like NBA Jam, and it's essentially like NBA Jam or NBA Hang Time, but with, you know, 3D and polygons and whatnot. And it's, well, pretty much just as good as... Uh, those games. If you like that, you'll like this. It's, of course, on many systems. You know, of course, Arcade, PS1, Dreamcast, N64, and Game Boy Color. So, um, yeah, there it is. I'm glad to play it, and I'm glad I, it made it to the N64. Okay, we're actually making really good time here. Um, well, let's see, uh, I got PS2 games. Now, of course, the PS2 uh, recently hit its 19th birthday in March. You know, not as uh, monumental as its 20th birthday, but I, of course, had to get some games for the occasion. And uh, these two games here aren't the greatest, but you know what? Fuck it, they'll, they're will they decent additions that I was curious about. This is Cue Ball Billiards Master. This was a launch title on the PS2. Um, and wow, it really does feel early 2000s. I can tell just by, you know, the music and the, uh, atmosphere and what this game has going. It just screams early 2000s, which is very era-appropriate. You know, that's the case. As for the game, well, um, honestly, when it comes to pool, I'd rather play Pool Hall Pro on the Wii or Virtual Pool 64 on the N64. But as far as this goes, um... Eh, it's competent. It's hard to recommend, but, you know, it's not the worst thing you can go for, I guess. It's probably noteworthy for it being a launch title, and, you know, it's a billiards game. There's not a ton of those. I, I like a good billiards game, but, you know, this... Eh. You know? Look at this cover art. Fuck yeah. Um, here's another one. I didn't really play much of this, but I will play some more. This is MLB 07 The Show. I imagine it's not too terribly far off from MLB 10, the show on the PS3, which is the other one I have. Just decided we need a baseball game on the PS2 and a late one. This one was also on the PS3. The first one, uh, 06, was a uh, PS2 only. Well, okay, it might have been on the PSP, but you get what I mean. But yeah, I got this instead of the superior PS3 version, so, uh... Yeah... 
Okay, we have a couple more games to uh, talk about here. Uh, they're all for the Wii, and they all kind of have a, um, you know, very specific subject to each other. In fact, I'm going to show you them first, and then I'll talk about them. Here we have Monster Trucks Mayhem, Bigfoot Collision Course, Monster Trucks Arena's Special Edition, and Monster 4x4 Stunt Racer. Okay, let's start off with these three. I believe this is the first time I've mentioned um, him, but Gatorbox, uh, who you might know from Your Level Sucks, depending on uh, what you do know on YouTube. I don't know what the fuck you know on YouTube. But uh, yeah, in a video he made, which was essentially a Twitch highlight of him basically thanking uh, supporters on Patreon, he was showing off some games that he, uh, that he picked up recently. And among those games were these three monster truck games on the Wii. And for some reason, because of that, I was inclined to actually go out of my way and pick up all three games for myself. Why don't we go ahead and talk about them? Uh, so this is Monster Trucks Mayhem. Uh, this is was actually the first game I ended up beating in 2019. I got this, like, uh, back in February, and uh, hot damn, this game is awful. Um... You know, it may have some pretty good ideas, like I do like where it's going with some of the course designs. You know, it's basically like you have a race, then you have this like destruction derby sort of mission. Like, oh, just destroy X amount of items and get a certain amount of points to move on. But the thing is, the game is very shallow and very easy and just overall unsatisfying to play and whatnot. The music's not good. There's also no multiplayer, so there's absolutely no replay value. Again, you, you beat it in like two hours, and then you're fucking done with this just no good game. And then we got Bigfoot Collision Course, which... Oh my fucking god, holy shit, Jesus Christ on a fucking bike. Son of a bitch, this game. This game is like... Really one of the worst games I've ever played in my life. Like, goddamn, this is really like a whole new level of Wii shovelware bad. If you look at this game, this game looks like, you know... This game looks like a game that, you know, fucking Critical slash Penguins Zero would have played. You know, like some really, like, shitty half-assed, you know, like, PC game probably made for the sake of a shit post or, you know lulls and whatnot. I can't believe that this is a fucking thing. The Oh god, frame rate, graphics, controls, AI, you know, uh, physics, fuck all everything. Like, let me say this. The only thing even remotely positive about this fucking game I can think of maybe is like the um music that plays during like one of the snow um races, you know, one of the snow uh, level things, whatever. That's, that's, that's all I can think of that's positive about this. Fucking, you know, everything, just, even the menus I think I mentioned already. Awful game, just awful. God awful, just, fuck. I can't believe I bought this. I really cannot believe I fucking bought this. There's a very good reason why you stay clear from Wii Shovelware. Because then you get this fucking, you know, awful experience. And then you get, like, this fucking hollow-ass, just terrible, god-awful, no-good experience. Okay. Now we have Monster Trucks Arena's Special Edition. Which, um... What was up? I believe Special Edition because this is, like, an updated version of a, the PS2 fucking game. Because I believe this was a PS2 game at first. And, uh, well, I mean, it's definitely the least worst of the three, but that's not really saying much of anything. This was, of course, by Data Design Interactive, a very infamous company on the Wii, though. Again, I'm legit shocked that this game is actually a whole lot more, is a whole, is a lot better than these two. It's more competently made. Is it good? Probably not. Um, you know, it's kind of boring in some cases, you know, but, like, I don't know how to describe it. Just... Like, look it up, but don't don't buy it. Really, don't buy it. And uh, because of all that, I had to get an actual good monster truck game on the Wii. And this is one I didn't really know about prior until I saw it in the store, but I just mentioned already. But yeah, 
a monster 4x4 stunt racer. I just looked at the screenshots on the back, and I'm like, okay, this actually looks definitely above average, you know? And it's by Ubisoft, so at the very least, it's not going to be on the same level as these fucking, you know, like, miserable excuses. And, uh, yeah, this is actually a pretty good game. It has, you know, a nice uh, challenge to it. You know, you have a decent variety of things to do. Course design good. Graphics are very nice um, for the Wii. It's almost, you know, up there. With, almost up there with, like, a game Nintendo would have made themselves for players um absolutely recommended it. it's definitely a hidden gem on the wii for sure but yeah that's uh, all i have to show for now uh i didn't talk about like soul caliber 6 just because i need to play that game some more and uh, we'll talk about it next episode okay real quick i forgot to talk about this i'll mention these real quick um we have soul caliber 4 on the xbox 360 now this is of course a game i already owned for years and years and years um but the thing is, my copy was the, uh, you know, Platinum Hits edition, and I fucking hate those, because who the fuck doesn't? Uh, so, yeah, I went ahead and bought an, um, a non-Platinum Hits copy. Uh, and as for Soul Calibur 4 itself, um, it's definitely not something I've played nearly as much as pretty much all the other ones, with the exception of, like, say, Soul Calibur Legends on the Wii, because I don't own that. Um, but, you know, it's definitely something I'll look forward to playing a little more. So, yeah, that's cool. And finally, with this next game, we got all the 2018 purchases out of the way. This is Blaze Blue Continuum Shift Extend, also on the Xbox 360. Honestly, one thing that really attracted to me in this to this game was um, in uh, Alpha Omega Sin's Room Tour video from 2017. I saw this in his uh, Xbox 360 collection, and then I was like, you know what? I want that now. <laughs> so I love how on the back here it says, "The time for or the Azure has come." What does that mean? The Azure Azure Striker Gunvolt? If that's the case, I'm totally fucking on board. I got this way back in fucking, like, you know, mid or late November, and now I'm just talking about it. I haven't played it a ton since then, but I can say I do like it um, more than uh, Blaze Blue Calamity Trigger on the Xbox 360, which I bought way back in September. Uh, it's good stuff. I mean, it could be better than, say, Blaze Blue Cross Tag Battle, especially for the fact that, you know, it didn't hide half the fucking roster as DLC, but, um, I don't know if I'll get into it quite as much, but it's a good game, you know, and, uh, I definitely have reasons to actually play it a little more, uh, now. But, anyways, there we go. There's all the, uh, pickups, uh,